Okay, friends, let's get going here on making bath bombs. The first up, we're going to do Kata, and we're going to use Kata's recipe that they provide for you. So we're just making a small little batch today. It's just 20 ounces, no big deal. I already have everything ready to go. So we're gonna start mixing now in the way that I know how to mix, which is adding your citric acid last. I'm going to go ahead and put my dust mask on now. I'm not gonna to bother to put on my gas mask, but I do have an N95 hanging around my neck at all times. But you never know when you're gonna need it. Okay, so here we have, <clears throat> let's just go over their ingredients real quick. We have 61% baking soda. Okay, so what I did is I took their recipe and I just went ahead and converted that into percentages because that's the easiest way for me to work so I can make whatever size batch that I would like to. So 61% baking soda, 30% citric acid, 1% cream of tartar, 3% SLSA, 3% of avocado oil, 1% of polysorbate 80, uh, 1% of your fragrance, and then they are saying to use water as your binder. We are not using colorants today in any of these um, because I'm not going to waste colorants just for demo purposes. Um, so let's just keep going, okay? I've already got everything all mixed here with my dry ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add my wet ingredients which basically is just my avocado oil, my polysorbate, and my fragrance. We're gonna just dump that right on in. And normally you guys know that I like to use my hand mixer. A lot of people will use their stand mixer. Today I'm just gonna go ahead and use a whisk because these are such little small amounts. In a little bit, after we get done doing um, these four mold suppliers and we start doing our own, then I'll go ahead and break out my hand mixer because I'm going to make a full batch of my recipe. All right, so just mix this all together real well. Okay, the last thing you do is you add your citric acid because you don't want it to activate. Mix that in. And then we'll take a look at the consistency. And we're probably going to add some of the water. They said use water as your binder. FYI, I have never used any of these recipes. Not Chunk of Dust, not Kata, not Inedible Soaps. I've never used any of their recipes. So basically, we're finding out together, okay? I do know how to use their molds. I've been using them for a long time. I'm good at it. I know what I'm doing. I'm very comfortable with it. So really though, because I've never used their recipe, this is like I'm a brand new person just starting off, just like some of you guys. I have no idea what this recipe is going to do because I've never used it before. Now I know with my recipe, I don't have problems with any of these molds with my recipe. But we're gonna find out all right, let's take a look at this um, consistency. I know it's really confusing for people to say, oh, you want wet sand. No, you don't, you want damp sand. No, you don't, you want kinetic sand. There's so many different opinions out there. It's all a matter of practice, 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 and whatever you get comfortable with and used to and familiar with, and you will. Like, I can tell this is not wet enough, but let's just go ahead and see. Take some, squeeze it. Does it hold its form? That kind of is holding its form. Let's drop it and see if it still holds its form. Kind of, sort of, but it is kind of breaking up a little bit too. Now, we have not added any binder yet. So why don't we do that? I've got a spray bottle of some distilled water. So let's just give it a couple of spritzes. All right, so that's five spritzes. And let's mix this up. I hesitate to do that once I've added the citric acid because I don't want my mixture to start activating. With my recipe, I add all of my wet ingredients first and I have precise measurements on my wet ingredients and I add all of that to my dry ingredients and the very last thing that I add is the citric. Again, because I don't want that to start activating. Alright, 
let's take a looky loo here. It's a little better. Now, with 3D molds, the more detailed your mold, the wetter your mix needs to be. And by wetter, I mean adding more oils, not water, oils. So I showed you guys in the beginning, I showed you the lip and I showed you the dinosaur egg. But let's just do a couple of the molds that everybody does from Kata. This is their three inch donut mold. Super easy. All right, let's put some in there. Shake. We always give it a little bit of a shake so that um, the bath bomb mixture can get down into all the cracks and crevices, okay? So put all your mix in there. We're going to put your top on. Give it some pushes. Turn it. I always brace my wrist so I'm not putting pressure on my wrist every time I'm pushing down. So I always brace it with my other hand. Those of you who have carpal tunnel or those of you who are developing carpal tunnel, this is quite the help. Oh, there we go. There goes my entire situation here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. All right, let's take this. We're going to take our skewer, get rid of this hole in the middle. Rid of our excess. Let me just get this paper towel here because that, that bottle is leaking just a little bit. All right, we're going to take our shell and we're going to move it up and down. It doesn't take a lot for this particular mold. And this is one that literally everybody uses. I mean everybody. If you do a search, you will find all over the place so many different ways to use this mold so many different ways to decorate this mold and put toppings on it and whipped creams and cocoa butter drizzles and sprinkles and glitters and toys oh my <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and take this mask down now Whew. all right i'm just brushing off the outside just to get rid of some of that kind of stuff now just give it some light taps Turn it over, light taps, done. This is really, truly like the easiest mold on the planet. It really is. Here you go, right off. Turn it upside down, take the top off. And there you have a beautiful donut. All right, let's put him over here. One down, a million to go. All right, let's do their waffle. It's another one that literally everybody on the planet uses this. I like to put the design on the bottom because anytime that I have a design with the 3D molds, I like to give it little pushes down into the design, which you know, kind of ensures that you're going to get the design out in the finished product. So sprinkle a little bit on the bottom and then just light presses, you guys. You don't have to like jam it down and push it down and really impact it, just lightly. See how light? I mean, I'm, I'm barely even pushing. But I am doing it thoroughly. I'm going all the way around and then I'm going all the way in the middle. All right, and continue filling. Shake, shake, shake. Take your bottom plate or your top plate, however you want to look at it, turn it over, put it on, give it some presses, turn it and press. Take your shell off. I always like to give a nice little swoop on the inside, get rid of all that excess. If you don't want any Saturn ring at all, give it another press. I always do because I don't like Saturn rings on my products based solely on the fact that it's a pain in the rear end ski 
to uh, put the shrink wrap on there and have it come out nice and smooth and looking nice. All right, a couple taps on the top. Turn it over. All right, now I'm going to turn it over again and I'm going to remove the bottom, which is flat, so that I could put my cardboard. Hold, please. Let me grab my cardboard. Okay, let's take this bottom plate off straight up. Take your cardboard, flip it over, and turn it over. Gently lift straight up. And there you have a beautiful waffle. And do you see how all those designs came out? All the details in that mold came out because we took a little bit of extra time and we just gently press, 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 gently, no big deal. You do not have to press hard. So these are the two, hold on, let me grab this one again. These two molds from Kata are arguably their most popular molds, their donut and their waffle. Everybody uses those, okay? So there's how you make those. I know the, the donut was really easy. It was not detailed in any way. So that being said, we still have a little bit of mix to use up here, waste not, want not. Again, I have never used their recipe. This is the first time I have ever used their recipe, and so far, I'm not having any problems with it. Let's see how this guy comes out, though. This is their spider mold, which in the finished product looks fantastic if you can get it to unmold and not have the legs break off. For me, it's a crapshoot. 50% of the time, I can get it to go. The other 50%, not so much. So let's try it today, shall we? Take that bottom plate, put your top shell on there, fill it a little bit, give it some shakes. Now, take your pinky finger, because that's all that's going to fit in there, and try to press down on these legs, because if you don't, I promise you they're going to break off. I've used this mold extensively. Last Halloween, I used this sucker a lot. And you can only get your finger in here so much, because like I said, all of these little legs that are coming out, they're skinny. So I can take my chopstick, give it some pokes down in there, give it some light presses down in each one of these legs. Always around these pressure points. You always want to pack a little bit better. So a little bit more, press, 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 a little more. Most likely, I'm going to cut this video down into a couple of different parts because this is going to be really, you know, pretty extensive. And we don't want a, a five hour long video. All right, so we're going to take the top plunger and we're going to turn that over, stick it on the top. Okay, here we go. <laughs> stick that on the top and give it some pushes. Turn. Taps around the outside. Taps on the top. Turn it over, tap on the bottom. All right, let's take that bottom plate off, straight up. See, the legs came out because I didn't press it enough. So we're gonna start all over with that one. That's what happens with this one. This one, I hate this mold. <laughs> but that being said, again, if you can get this to come out of here intact, like it's, it's not going to. Uh, again, this is not my recipe though either. This is their recipe. My recipe, I can get it to go, like I said, about 50% of the time and 50% of the time I cannot. This is a booger of a mold. I can't stand working with this one. But 
it does produce a really, really cool looking bath bomb in the end if you can get it to go. We're going to give it one more try and we're going to give up because I, I've got to move on. And I already know this mold. I chose to do this today on the demo um, because it's a really intricate mold. It's got a lot of intricate pieces, parts, a lot of detail, a lot of skinny little pieces poking out and hanging out. And I mean, just look at this top plunger. Look at the legs on that. Good luck trying to unmold that sucker. So this is what I'm going to do. They say uh, to use water as your binder, which is fine. Because this has some intricate things going on, I always keep my fractionated coconut oil off to the side here, just in the event that I need to add a little bit more of a lightweight oil. Because as I said in the beginning, um, with 3D molds that are a little bit more intricate with their design, a wetter mix is better. And by wetter, I mean oil. You need to put a little bit of oil. So I'm just gonna give it a light little squeeze, no big deal. Whisk that in. All right, let's get in here with our hands. That feels okay. It's not like mine. It's, it's different. The texture is very different. My, my mix doesn't feel sandy. My mix feels, I don't even know how to describe it, like dense, like, like almost like putty or bubble dough or something like that. I use butters in my recipe, cocoa butter and shea butter. And then my binder is witch hazel and rubbing alcohol. 70% on the witch hazel and 30% on the rubbing alcohol, 99% rubbing alcohol. Right, let's see what this does. I told you, this is going to be long, you guys. If, if this one doesn't come out, I'm, I'm giving up on it, just because I know this is a, excuse my French, this is a pain in the ass mold to work with. It really is. It's a pain in the ass. So let's see if the addition of some oil in their recipe helps. Giving it some pretty decent wax, especially around the legs. Because those are the problem children. All right, let's see what happens when we take this top plate off. Okay, that's better. It's better. I still have a leg that broke off, but it's better than it was before. Now, Trying to push this plunger up and through there with all these intricate legs and these skinny little pieces is also a pain in the ass. So, oh God, I hate this mold. Oh, I hate it. Wow, all right. Well, that just completely broke apart. So, <laughs> but this is how we learn, you guys. You know what I mean? I can tell you that I've never had that happen with my recipe. Never. I've had legs break. I've had parts of the top part of the leg break off when I'm trying to unmold it. I've had that happen, but I've never had that happen. So we're moving on because I, listen, I, I will be here until all of next week trying to get that particular mold to work. So no, thank you. All right, let's just uh, pour the rest of everything in the, in the dinosaur egg here. And we'll give some presses just so we can try to get those scales to come out nice. Now you guys saw with the waffle, the design came out beautiful with their recipe. No problems, came out wonderful. It's just that particular mold, that spider mold is just a booger. That's all there is to it, booger. Okey Take our top cup with our design, stick it on the top, 
To me, this is not enough mold, uh, bath bomb mix, but we'll see what happens. It might work out, might not, I don't know. Usually I like to fill it completely to the top, slightly over, especially when there's a cup involved because you know you have that huge void then that you need to fill up. So I usually try to mound up the cup just a little bit, but I didn't have enough mix to do that, so we're not gonna. Okay. Take our shell off. Give a little wipe. A wipe and a swipe. I usually take my spoon and that can get rid of some of the other. All right, let's give it another press. Try to avoid as much of that Saturn ring as we can for me. If you guys like a Saturn ring and if you don't have any problems packaging it that way, go for it. All right, uh, taps around the outside of the cups because these are, are wide, they're wide kips. So let's tap around the outside, then we'll do the top and the bottom. All right, straight up with your cup. <laughs> oh man, I can't make this stuff up, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is why you guys need to develop your own bath bomb mix that works for you. This is part of the reason, in my opinion, why other people's um, bath bomb recipes don't work a good portion of the time. It may work for them, the creator, the mold supplier. It may work for them where they live in the humidity and the geographical location and the elevation and everything else, it may work for them. That doesn't mean it's going to work for you, as we just saw. I've been making bath bombs for 20 years. I've been using 3D bath bomb molds for the past, going on two years, it'll be two years in June. It's not my first rodeo, I'm not a newbie. I know what I'm doing. But, this just goes to show you, doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Doesn't matter if you know what you're doing. Doesn't matter what your experience level is. It's all about the recipe. It is all about the recipe, not the base. <laughs> Sorry, getting a little punchy, you know. So, so really, to me, this is not enough mix. I don't have enough mix left, but well, let, let's just give it one more. One more try, see what happens. Push and turn. All right, let's get rid of this shell. One more push. Right, this time I'm not gonna the tap around the outside. Maybe that created a fissure between the two halves and busted it in half. So let's just tap on the top. Turn it over. All right, let's see what happens. Nope, there's a lot of resistance. Nope, this is not working. So I am going to conclude that this particular recipe from Kata does not work for me. Now, in saying that, you just saw the donut came out fine, but that, that's simple. It's round, there's no detail whatsoever. It's the easiest mold in the world to work with. The, um, the waffle mold also worked perfectly fine. 
but look at how skinny it is. Look at how skinny that is in compared to how thick just one half of the egg is. Okay, so if it makes you guys feel any better, I don't know if it does or if it doesn't, but so many of you guys struggle with these 3D bath bomb molds and I really never do. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying this as to be bragging, I'm saying this to be helpful. It's all about the recipe, I'm telling you. Because I don't have problems. I have used this dinosaur egg a gazillion times with my recipe, and I'll even do it later. When we get to my recipe, I'll use it, I'll show you. I don't have a problem unmolding this. That, with a breaking <laughs> in half, that has never happened to me. And I've used this mold a gazillion times times. Okay, so we're going to move on. There is extra mix, mix in here that I'll just do something with later. I don't really care at this moment. We have to keep moving on. We have a lot to cover. Give me just a second. Let me clean this up and get ready. We're going to go into chunk of dust next.